you found Michigan's retirement coach, Mike Douglas. Glad to have you here with us alongside Michigan's retirement coach, certified financial planner, Mike Douglas. And if you have questions about your retirement savings plan, or if you have questions that you hear Mike talk about in this conversation today, you can visit us at Michigan's retirement coach.com. We also have links posted in the show notes so you can click there and don't forget to subscribe to our, you, I'm not going to say it, our YouTube channel. The YouTube. Not sorry. I'm not sorry for the way That's I phrase right. words. I love the energy. Our YouTube channel. Just yep. search Michigan's Retirement Coach on YouTube and you can find us there. Thinking the thoughts. Have you ever seen those memes where like you're lying in bed at 2 a.m.? And that's when you think about that one weird thing you said to that person one time 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. Those are the kinds of things that actually make life hard. I believe that it's not the hard stuff that makes life hard. It's that kind of stuff. It's the little things, good and bad, makes life hard. Do you have ever, do you have problems sleeping? You got four kids. There must be some sleepless nights. No, I, so I, I think that the, one of the challenges I have is when things aren't resolved, getting to sleep. Got if it. you don't give yourself a place, uh, there was a a great book years ago called Getting Things Done. I don't remember who wrote it. Okay. Um, but the book basically talked about the fact that your brain has these loops. And if you don't close the loop, your brain will, in a protective measure, bring things back to the front to remind you. And Is that what all the awkward moments are about? We need to somehow go find ways to close those awkward loops from the past. Yeah. When he said, uh, and your brain knows if you're lying to it or not, like you can do certain things to trick your brain. But if like, if you say, all right, I'll, I'll get to that later. Your brain says, you didn't schedule it. You didn't put it in your calendar. You didn't put it on Evernote. Sounds like you it sounds like our brains are real jerks. <laughs> well, it's an accountability partner, okay. you know, and it's like, uh, so through it all, you're like, oh, I'll get to that. And that's why it keeps coming back to like, if you say, oh, okay. I need to get groceries today. Yeah. I should place an Instacart order. And then you don't order it right now. And then a little while later, you're still at work, but you go, oh, crap, I still got to place that Instacart order. You keep doing it, keep doing it, keep reminding. Uh-huh. Well, then what's amazing is he he goes through any details out that if you will give something a place holder uh-huh. that your brain trusts, your brain will release the information. And I'm like, that can't be that true. What does that even um, mean? And so what's an example you, of that? So if I said I need to place an Instacart order, uh-huh. right, so we can get groceries for our family and I put in my calendar right now. With an alarm on it at 3 p.m., order Instacart. I will, my brain now says, okay, we took care of that. And it allows it to let go. Okay. And I won't think about it again. Uh-huh. And my alarm's gonna go off at three o'clock and I say, what the heck is that for? Oh, I need to place that Instacart order. And I've tested it and run it through different systems and different things. And it works. It works really, really well. And the reason that the Instacart is so pertinent is because I didn't do that. And I ended up placing our Instacart order at one o'clock this morning Got because it. I was in bed and I was Lying freaking out like, woke, oh, woke, crap, oh. I didn't do it. Got and it. So I got up, walked around our kitchen and placed our Instacart order, then went back to bed. Got it. And like, then you were able to go to sleep. I was able to go to sleep like a baby, right? And But it's just a matter of that. So your brain actually has protective loops and mechanisms. Um, it's a really, really good book, too, uh, because he specifically goes through uh, David Allen. What's the David name of the book? Allen is the guy. Getting Things Done okay. by David Allen. Um, no sponsorship, no right. relationship. Uh, I read it probably 10 years ago okay. and it was radically, uh, empowering to get things out of your brain onto paper and make it more likely to get them done. Let's talk about getting things done in the way of financial planning, because yeah. I don't know if everybody, anybody's ever actually done actual studies to say how much time people plan on weddings, how much time they spend planning vacations versus the time that they don't spend planning their financial futures. So there was a study by the National Science Foundation about our thoughts, and it found the average person has anywhere from 12 to 60,000 thoughts every day. But of those thoughts, 80% of them are basically a waste of time because 80% are either negative or repetitive. So it goes back to the 80-20 rule. And thinking about the people that you work with, or perhaps let's talk maybe today to the people that you don't necessarily work with and you should be working with because of all of us, every single American thinks about retirement and retirement one day and has a dream or has a want or has a thing that they're going to do when they finally don't have to work for the man. But how much time have you actually spent planning for your retirement? I Yeah. 
fully believe that for the majority of people, there is a great disconnect between those two things, Mike. Am I wrong? Well, the, the stat you were talking about, so they say the average person spends 40 hours a year yeah. planning vacations. Yeah. A full work week planning your vacations yeah. and less than two hours on personal finance. Mm-hmm. Especially long-term planning, personal finance. I mm-hmm. mean, you have to do a certain amount of it every month, but um, on average, less than two hours a year on yep. long-term finance planning. Yep. So that's a, that's a conflict. That's an issue. Um, and people have a whole host of reasons why we don't do it. Uh, sometimes we don't like where we're at, so we'd rather not deal with it. Right. That's an issue. Right. right. You can't just avoid it. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're fine, if your body's broken, go to the doctor. If your finances are broken, talk to someone who can help you get fixed. Yeah. Um, and I think people just want to avoid the pain of dealing with finances. Okay. And it's more fun to think about where in Mexico we're going to go than how we're going to tighten our belts on our budget and save money for Mexico. Maybe if we change our perspective, then imagine you're planning for a 20 year vacation, a 30 year vacation. Yeah. Think about it from that perspective. Yeah. That could well, help. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it could be. People don't do it, but it would be great if they did. Right. Um, but instead, unfortunately, we treat finances like a have to, not a get to or want to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's just part of the process of growing into that space. Okay. Retirees, you are your own CFO. You are the one responsible for getting paid. Um, the, your boss no longer pays you when you stop going to work, mm-hmm. right? Especially increasingly more as pensions disappear. I mean, less than 8% of Americans will retire with a lifetime pension now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, more and more, it's you your social security and your savings. That's what you got. And so we need a plan that makes sense. We need, and and there's a lot of reasons because some people, when they go through this process, they say, I'm not hiring a financial advisor. I get it. There's a lot of reasons not to hire a financial advisor. Right. Maybe you just really want to be independent and you've always done it yourself and you want to keep doing it. Great. I get it. I think there's power in doing, and I don't think you should ever pay someone for something you enjoy doing. Okay. Right. Uh, On the other hand, um, there's stuff that I will not do in my life. I probably could. We've talked about changing oil. I could probably change my own oil. I think I could figure it out. DIY renovations. Don't talk I, to Mike about this. <sighs> no, nope, not going to do it. Don't talk to Kimberly about it because my DIY Even renovations so. cost us four years of having trim <laughs> on our base, on the baseboard. Um, uh, these things happen. And so, but now instead we moved to our new house. We yeah. paid someone to do it and yeah. it was done within a week. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. But I don't enjoy that. I don't enjoy doing right, right. renovations. I don't enjoy mechanical projects, right? So that's why we should have never bought a house with a pool. Um, but it's just all these things that you know what you love doing and do them. And if you can do it yourself, don't pay someone else to do it. Most people uh, either reach a point of fatigue or have no desire to do their investing. Yeah. And that's when you hire a financial advisor. Yep. Um there's also a thing out there about the quality of advice in the survey that was taken. 45% of respondents expressed doubts about whether the advice they would receive would justify the cost. Mm-hmm. Am I getting worthy advice? And when you, and you talk to someone who's a financial advisor, but all they do is just buy Apple stock, Microsoft, Tesla, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and the S and P mm-hmm. like, that's just a whatever portfolio, mm-hmm. you know, I don't need that. Um, and so when it comes to investing, if it comes strictly to just, How do I manage my account? Oftentimes you can do just as well, if not better than advisor. If it Mm -hmm. comes down to strictly just buying stocks, because Mm -hmm. you can do the research if you like it. You can use chat GPT or you can use all these different AI tools that are out there now to try and do it on your own. If you really like it, there's another thing where just people don't understand the things they don't understand. So those are a, a good reason to do it. You love doing it and you want to keep the cost down and you think you can do better than the great, then you should do it yourself. On the other hand, there's this other stuff that's out there that we don't talk about when we talk about retirement planning, but we should be talking about. And and when we talk about a lack of perceived need, like, do we actually need someone to help me with this? Well, do you fully understand the consequences of taking money out of an IRA account versus a trust account or a non-qualified brokerage account, how they're taxed when you get interest on them, how they're taxed when you get distributions from them or a Roth IRA? All are different. Do we understand how provisional income taxes work on your social security? If I take from my IRA, I now have to pay taxes on my social security. If I take from my trust account, I don't have to take pay taxes on my social security. Those things matter. Yeah. So the distribution of assets and the preservation of assets is the thing a financial advisor should be really good at. Okay. And that's the differentiation point. We're all good at accumulating assets, right? right. Buy the S&P, 
buy the NASDAQ and let it sit for 25 years and you will do great. Well, compound interest, reinvest dividends. And perhaps that's also a, a bit of the difference of when you should seek help, because a lot of people, I think you yourself have said in your accumulation years, when you're in 20s, 30s, 40s, even on a lot of your 50s, just invest, 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 keep it going. Yeah, That's great for growth years. But when you have to start taking that nest egg and spending it down and then figuring out things like social security and tax strategies and legacy planning and long-term health care planning, all of those things that you never had to think about before your working years, there's just so many rules. So that's the difference. And for when somebody is going into retirement, perhaps you were a great DIY investor in your working years, but do you know all these other facets that have to be understood for your retirement years? Because that's, that's what, let's talk about that. That's what is different about you and your business and what you do. Explain what differentiates you further. Right. Yeah. I think the difference is, are you looking for an advisor or a full on certified financial planner? Right. Right. So an advisor says, buy this, don't buy that. Right. Um, as a, as a CFP, a certified financial planner, we're fiduciaries. We build full comprehensive financial plans that deal with everything we talked about. Taxes, estate planning, investment management, risk management, uh, income management, all of the what ifs, long term care, Medicare planning, all these things are factored in to a CFP, a, a true on financial plan. Right. So then that's the thing we to separate from. Are you an advisor who's just giving some advice on what to buy or sell? Uh-huh. Are you an actual certified planner who looks at all these things for down the road, builds models, builds projections, and doesn't just say, well, buy good stocks and sell bad stocks, right? But actually accounts for the goods and the bads inside your plan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and when you have those collective things, another major differentiator is having someone at a conference table you can actually sit down and talk to. That's a, that's a big difference from an 800 number. Yeah. You know, you call in and you say, I want to buy, you know, call Capital Group or wherever else. And, and, and you just don't actually talk to anybody, you know, it's mm-hmm. just whoever happens to answer the phone that day. Or maybe you even get a dedicated specialist at Fidelity and they say, great, we know you. You've never met that person. They're right. in Boston or wherever they're working. And instead, when you have a real local representative, not an 800 number. That's a whole different point when someone sits down with you and says, let's work through your plan. And when the hard times come, someone passes away. I get an inheritance. I have a kid who's sick. I have this, all these different hard life things. Mm -hmm. Someone to help you sit down and work through them, not just says, you know, hello, thanks for calling, whatever, you know, Edward Jones, this is Mike. No, it's a comprehensive local relationship. And that's a big difference. Got it. Got it. Michigan's retirementcoach.com is where you can go if you are realizing that maybe you need some help could use some assistance from Mike. Just click on that button, start your retirement roadmap today. And that's how to begin that conversation. Talking to an individual, somebody that does get to know you and your circumstances. So when you're in these conversations with folks, is there a turning point that you see in a meeting and you and you can tell that that, that switch gets flipped, no matter what it is, the negative thought in their head, and then the positive comes in and it's just like the relief also hopefully comes in. Yeah. When is the light bulb moment? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. The, yeah. the aha moment. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a great thing when, when people go through, cause we sit down with people all the time and yeah. when, when they click that retirement roadmap button, we spend a, a little bit of time just hearing their whole story. And then we run all the research we possibly can on their current scenario, their state of the union. Here's where you sit today. And then oftentimes people say, well, what would you do different? And then we show them a proposal mm-hmm. and the proposal goes through and it maps out where you're going to get income from every month the rest of your life how much you're going to pay in taxes every month the rest of your life based on proposed numbers right and then you go through all this detailed planning and they go holy cow this is a lot we say yeah it is a lot but you've worked for 40 years and to trust it to just an 800 number or just a let's earn more than we spend model is too dangerous Mm -hmm. and as soon as they see their names their plan their family legacy on a on a piece of paper that yeah. maps out exactly what it's going to do the rest of their lives. Yeah. You can see it just turn from a hope or an account to a plan. Got it. Right? If we actually have a written detail plan, we know all the stats about, you know, everybody can build plans, but the second you write it down and make it plain, it becomes 91% more achievable. And all these statistics that say if you have comprehensive strategies, mm-hmm. not just hope, <laughs> right? But you have to have a good thing there. And that that's what actually builds it forward. When the first check starts showing up from the income streams and they know that they're supposed to be getting income from their retirement accounts, but they're not sure how it's going to work out. And then they check their bank account and the money is there. 
And then the same time next month, the money's there, the money's there. Um, when they're able to start checking things off their bucket list, yeah. right? When we sit down and we say, one of the first things we say is, what do you want to accomplish the yeah. rest of your life? Yeah. And they go through and say, Grand Canyon, Europe, um, you know, the remodel a cottage or, or all this stuff, do the kitchen, whatever. As soon as you start checking things off the list, there's just increased. Um, these are all the different moments that we see people. We always say it, it renews their peace mm -hmm. every time it comes true again and again, right? Something they get income. Okay. I feel good about that. And then we accomplish a bucket list thing. Oh my, I feel better about that. So it's like, it's really, there's the light bulb of seeing the plan, but then a constant renewed peace when it just keeps happening. Yeah. Yeah. The idea of also that plan that's living and breathing because leading up to retirement and then getting into retirement. How often do you meet with the folks that you work with? Depends uh, on the person, come, I'm sure, but probably I make at least, them at least come in once a year. Okay. Half the people are like, you know what? I'm retired. I don't need to come in. Right. Like you do. We got to sit making down. Me come in. Yeah, right. Yeah. And they're like, I don't want to come in in the cold of winter, nor do I want to come in in the beauty of summer. Right. right? I'm like, like, well, great. It's not, yeah, yeah, Springtime then. Something but, out. <laughs> see you in April. Yeah. At least once a year. But yeah. we, I mean, honestly, between all the client events and all the fun stuff we do, then also any reviews or first Fridays, yeah. I, I bet we see our average client probably four to five times a year. Got it. Uh, and the massage chairs in the lobby. Is that? Massage chairs and a really nice coffee. <laughs> really yeah, good coffee. Uh, we have someone right now. You lure uh, them in in the dead middle of winter. You're like, come in in the massage chair. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have someone right now, and I and I love her to death. And she became a client, and she stops in all the time uh, yeah. uh, for the massage chair. Yeah. And she goes, well, this is free, and the chiropractor costs money. So I'm going to yeah. come in and so, get this. I said, hey. Just saying. I'm fine with it. That's why it's there. That's why it's there. Uh, and this is why Mike and his team are here. If you mm -hmm. are realizing that you are not getting this kind of service, whether it's because you're DIYing it or you've been working with somebody that's an 800 number or you haven't been doing anything at all, you've just been saving to a 401k or IRA and now we need to get to work, making sure that it's actually going to turn into income streams for your retirement. Let's begin that conversation. Michigansretirementcoach.com. Again, just click on that Start Your Retirement Roadmap Today button. We also have links posted in the show notes. So you can just click there or find us anytime. Michigansretirementcoach.com. Thanks for listening to Michigan's Retirement Coach with Mike Douglas. To learn more, visit michigansretirementcoach.com. Michael Douglas is an investment advisor representative of Stewards Wealth Planning, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. To find out if Michael Douglas is licensed in your state, please call 517-323-7526. Stewards Wealth Planning, LLC is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Michael B. Douglas, NP. PN number 9650939.